Dang, that is a greasy, nasty windshield. Those lights are looking pretty though. Glad those are still up. The entire car is just filthy. Can you hear that? The motor to pull the mirror in and out, it's just running. It won't turn off, I don't know why. Okay, now can you hear it? I'll put this all the way up there. See me? Hello, hi. Hey, what's up, friend and friends? How's everybody doing? If you're a tropical plant party, how's everybody doing? I hope you're good. I am great. I'm at Lowe's, which you can't... I'm at Lowe's. There we go. That's better. I've come to realize that it makes a little bit more sense to run my errands at nighttime because nobody's out. So it just feels a little bit more safe. And that's also when I have the most energy these days. So I need to just go in and grab some stuff to get the plastic hung up in the garage. Hopefully... Well, I'll explain. We'll see when we get in there. It's a thing. It's called a zip wall. So again, we'll go. Let's, let's, let's go inside. See what's going on in there. And I'll apologize in advance because the audio through my phone sucks. But this is what I use when I'm out vlogging in public. So I'll try and hold the camera up nice and close to my face. See if that helps at all. And I also have no idea where what I'm looking for would be. Maybe with the paint. I want to look at the plants, but that I have to wait. So look at, there's so many plants. It's so fun. Something about winter, I always like get this itch and I want to paint. And I do have a room that needs to be painted, so I'll be coming back here soon. Hey, I didn't know they sold Floetrol here. That is way cheaper than at the craft store. I'm directly under a speaker and they're blasting cranberries. And I wish that, I wish they would stop because why? Well, I found what I'm here for, but it's, they, for some reason, they, they zip tied it to the, why? I can't have, I need. Okay, I can't find anyone to help me, so I'm gonna have to take care of this myself. It was much more complicated than it needed to be. Okay, now plants. There's the, the things that everybody always wants to see. Some beautiful ravens, some birkins, a whole bunch of, I didn't, some pink spotted begonias. Sure what kind, because they're not labeled. They just say trending tropicals. There's a type that's really common called like pink mint, mint something. I have some that looks just like these, but I can't remember the name, whatever. It's, they're pretty, nice, pretty, beautiful spotted begonias. Something a little bit different from the maculatas. That's nice. I think it is so cool that they have like the spring stuff up now, the end of December. Cause usually they don't have these things set up until like, I don't know, late January into February, something like that. Oh, hello. That is a very pretty bromeliad. Heck, lucky just to have plants in the stores, period. This, I think I already talked about this last time I was here, didn't I? It's so nice having plants available and things to look at when it's all gross and gloomy outside. <laughs> and they look so happy and healthy too. Look at that. Beautiful. Yeah, that was unnecessary shade. That just happens sometimes. This orchid, this phalaenopsis, look at it. Look at how stunning this phalaenopsis is. It has nice stripes and lots of unopened buds. It's very pretty. I can't, the speakers, shut up. There's some good looking marginatas. Their cuts are nice and clean. Should end up with some good healthy growth. You know, when they twist these trunks though, sometimes you end up with really weird wonky looking plants a few years down the road. Is it just me or is this begonia like extra metallic -y and shiny? It's not showing on camera in person. This is like glowing. It's just a regular Rex, nothing exquisite or special, but it is very, you can't tell. It's super vibrant in person. With all the trending plant things that have been going on, it has actually been a really long time since I've just seen a nice, beautiful, regular philodendron scandens. Used to be one of the most common ones out there. I mean, it still is, but I just haven't seen them in a long time because I think they people started to overlook them because they're just plain and green, but they're so pretty. Beautiful, beautiful, easy plants. Maybe it's just where I live, or maybe I just haven't been paying attention. I've been overlooking them potentially, but this one, I don't know. It just caught my eye. It's so happy and cute with those beautiful heart-shaped leaves. Just a classic beauty. Okay, I'm home, and for some reason, my lights won't turn off. This car, just the older it gets, the weirder it gets. And there's a light on down here. You can't see it. it I, don't, I don't know what it is. I have no idea what it means. <sighs> Teenagers, what can you do? Okay, now it's off. I swear, every single time I get in this car, I end up talking about something that's wrong with... Why am I... There's no reason to be filming out here. You can't see anything. Oh, hi, Pumpkin. I missed you. What'd you do while I was gone? Did you miss me, Bite? 
Did you miss me? I missed you so much. Yes, I did. You're such a good baby pumpkin. Yes, you were pumpkin. You say hi. Thanks, pumpkin. You said hi. You start meowing as soon as I turn the camera off. Such a good girl. I should switch over to the good camera, shouldn't I? Oh, there's Buddy. Hey, Buddy. How you doing, bud? You good boy. It's my sister's dog. He's gonna be staying here for a while. Just for a couple months while they get situated into a new home. And he's gonna stay here and so are her cats. You good boy, buddy. Where's Toby? Switch over to the good camera. Okay, this is a new mic. I've only used it once. Wasn't thrilled with it, but I hadn't made any adjustments to it yet, so... Uh, the audio will probably be odd throughout this entire video as I configure it and try and figure out the right settings to get it to sound nice. Still running from the camera, huh, Pumpkin? I don't blame you. Yeah, anyways, audio might be a little bit off. I noticed it was kind of tingy. Like there was a, I don't know, it just didn't sound quite as clear and crisp as I prefer. If there are ways to fix that, it's just I prefer to not because sometimes that takes... A long time with my computer so I've started to not be synced to get that doesn't matter need to get to work all right so here's that zip wall system there we go zip wall here with me when i bought it this essentially is is just a basically tension rod system to put plastic up this is supposed to make things pretty quick and easy this particular kit comes with four of these tension rods that just go up to the ceiling and they have these plates that go on top of everything. Why isn't my camera focusing? Did you not come to work today? I don't really know what that's about, but essentially this piece comes off of there and the plastic gets wedged in between these. I already went ahead and put up one of them right here. Really simple, really easy. So basically the plastic, you do it like this and then you have wedge, you get it. That makes a clamp and then you extend the pull up and the tension holds it up to the ceiling. I don't know how stable it is. My first time trying this, but figured why not? trying to keep things simple, come up with ways to do things a little bit more quickly. And the plastic, that goes all the way down there. I don't have enough plastic. I thought I did. This is all new plastic. It's Panda Film. I think it's from Vivo Sun. I can't remember. White on one side, black on the other. That's really more for like indoor grow rooms. White is more reflective than, well, translucent plastic, which is what I've usually used, just regular drop cloths. The way I was just using the six to eight mil plastic drop cloths like you get in the painting department at the hardware store which worked fine. I did use greenhouse plastic for a while and that was 10 mil and I really liked that, but it's kind of pricey to replace that. And the reason I even had all that plastic that was because I used to have little greenhouses I built over my palm trees outside in the winter. I don't really do that anymore. So I figured if I have to buy new plastic, I might as well get something that's gonna be more reflective and hopefully maybe brighten things up from the inside in there a little bit more. I don't know, we'll see. All right, that was extremely simple, much easier than I thought it was going to be. I and mean, that's the whole point of this, was that it's supposed to make it quick and easy. You know, few things are actually as simple as we think they're going to be. I'm not done yet. I still need to get this piece of plastic wrapped around. This is right here. This has to go behind this tube right here and behind this bookshelf and get that buckled up against the wall. You can see where I tape it up there just to make a tighter seal. And then there are spots up here. Maybe we should go to the inside so you can see. I haven't put the zipper door in here yet so to get through i either have to lift it up and crawl underneath or i have to go around the side here which is that's what i'll do for right now just so you can see what's going on over here in this direction it's very dark i'm not used to the black but down here this is where the third pole is i have one more pole you really can't see this but the other pole it's morning it got dark i decided that it would be better to come out here when it was a little bit more light because as the more i got this plastic up the more well, dark, you get it, it was dark. Anyways, there's one more pull left to go over on this wall. Only problem is I am just a few feet short on plastic. I need like, uh, I don't know, probably about three and a half, four more feet. So that kind of stinks, but is what it is. It's nice to be in here. I need to water this Aurelia. That is a plant that I really should have repotted last weekend because I'm just having a heck of a time keeping it hydrated. I'll get to that another time because I need to focus on everything going on in here right now. That turned off so you can see a little bit better. So there it is. A little bit easier to see the gaps from in here where things are lit up and not as dark from the black side of the plastic being up. So I still need to get like this area right here that needs to get pushed up. The zip wall, there's a kit you can get and use with this that provides like a vapor barrier. It's just a long, I don't know what you call it, like a piece of foam that goes up on the poles and 
will push your plastic up nice and tight. Huh, I didn't get that kit because, well, I didn't see it for sale anywhere. And I figured this could just be something where I start off this year with just the four piece kit. Two would probably have been better just so that there'd be a little bit more tension in between the poles to keep things a little bit tighter. But so far, this actually seems pretty sturdy. I guess saying so far doesn't mean too terribly much when it hasn't even been 24 hours. But I've been banging up against these things like left and right, just like knocking into them. And they have just the right amount of give that, I mean, I think it's okay. So that right there, not a big deal. Just take the ladder and just use a little bit of tape to pull that up and remove that gap. The hard part, always the most tricky part out here is dealing with this area over here. You might remember when I was doing the video of just gutting this garage and cleaning things out, and I went ahead and decided to put a piece of plastic up, kind of, you see right behind those lights, there's some plastic up there. Doesn't look pretty, but I mentioned in that video that that was something I would be glad that I did back then, or now. What am I trying to say? I knew then, back in October, early November, that if I didn't do that at that time, I'd be really mad at myself right now. <laughs> when I'm putting the plastic up. I'm glad that I did that because it's so hard to get up there and get the plastic pulled through there. It's really tricky. So this is much better. I'm glad that that's done. So all I really need to do is get on the ladder and make some cuts down the plastic right here so that this piece can go up flush against the ceiling right there, right above where my hand is. And I'll just have to do the same thing over there, which again, it's not too complicated, it takes a little while, but really it's not that big a deal. And then get the plastic situated in that gap. The main thing is just trying to get the area sealed off. And then I can come over here and put that zipper door in. Do you notice anything that could be a problem? Anything? Like just, there's something you can see here that shouldn't be here. Yeah, oops, that's supposed to be on the other side of the plastic. So I have to take this wall down to get that out of here. Oh, well, that's okay. Yeah, you know, I just, I got so excited to get this up and it really, it popped. This took like maybe 10 or 15 minutes. It really wasn't that bad at all. So pulling this back down just in this one spot, it's not like, that's not a big deal. I am so annoyed with myself that it happened, but hey, what can you do? All that being said, I really do need to get that ball rolling because I have a plant coming in the mail. I don't actually know what it is. It's being sent to me. So it's a surprise plant, but I have been told that it's something that's not going to like the cooler atmosphere that's in here right now, because it's it's pretty chilly. It got really cold outside and that made it cool down quite a bit in here. And I've been having trouble getting the temperature back up. So I really do need to finish this off. Have, getting that plastic up makes it so that I can keep this area in here right around 80 to 88, which is too high. I prefer to keep it lower than that. Without the plastic up, I struggle to keep the temperature about, I'd say 35 degrees warmer than it is outside. And right now it's 24 degrees outside. So it's about 60 in here. That's too cool. I mean, the plants are okay. As long as they're not sopping wet, that's not gonna kill them, but I would like for them to actually grow and perform and be happy. So it's time now that those winter temperatures are <laughs> actually here and things are getting Really cool, need to get all that, get it all sealed up. And then uh, uh, hopefully there'll be a fun plant to unbox here towards the end of the video and a nice warm, humid space to keep that plant. Ah, we will see. I can't imagine what the problem would be. Like literally just have to move some things and put some tape up and take a blade and do a little. Yeah, this is doable. I bet it'll only take me like 20 minutes to four and a half hours. We'll see. See that whole wall that just came down? No problem. The other end is it's over. It's like hiding back, you see, right there. Simple. And I'm glad that I noticed this next thing I'm about to tell you because I would have been really mad if I hadn't. I totally forgot that I needed to change out these light bulbs. They work, but I got something better to put up there. Which I have talked about in a different vlog and had mentioned that I ordered new grow bulbs to put up there. Just, I just hadn't gotten around to it. That really would have been unfortunate if I had gone ahead, finished putting that plastic wall up here, sealed it off, and then would be like, um, now what? Some people get the ladder over there. I still don't think I can get the ladder to this cluster right here, but I can at least change these three bulbs right up there. That shouldn't be an issue. And then uh, I have two others I'm going to put up here on this rack to come down on plants that'll go down right over here at some point. And these are the bulbs from CNC. Sansai, I don't, I don't know what, how you pronounce it. I talked about them in the video that I mentioned before where I was setting up the grow space that came out, I don't know, a few weeks ago, maybe a month ago. I really like these bulbs. I've had good luck with them. And uh, 
They seem to have a really nice spread and reach. I have plants that are a few feet underneath them and still flower even though there's that big distance. One of the few bulbs I can say that I really like and is actually fairly affordable. There's a link down below in the description. I got all these on Black Friday for like, I think they were 10 or $15 off, so I loaded up on them. And the bulbs that I have up here, these are fine. They work wonderfully. It's just that, well, this, these are better. So I want to swap some of them out. Just one of those things where it's like if you do a few each year, then the cost isn't quite as bad, you know? So I figure I can swap out like five this year and put up, a, have an additional one and then do a few more next year and add any additional ones that I need to at that point. And I'm doing the same thing with this plastic project. I'm going to keep it kind of simple this year. Next year can add to it, get a few more pieces. It's just so much easier to spread the expense out. Anybody else hold the bulbs up to your ears and shake them? See if they work? Maybe just destroy them in the process. Not that that matters when there's no filament in the bulb, just an old school habit. I did go ahead and put in all five new bulbs up here just because I was like, well, I'm already up here and I'm not going to be able to do this again until next year when there aren't plants here. So, or I guess several months from now. Just one less thing to have to worry about next year and have to remember to do. Okay, yes, very bright. That worked well. God, I love these bulbs. Little bit too intense. They're only a few feet off from the Monstera here, which I don't think is a problem. Shouldn't be since it's artificial lighting, but that is something I'll have to keep an eye on. So you can see from right here to that's probably only about 20 inches, maybe 24 inches, which I wouldn't normally be concerned about because these are plants that are under artificial lights. So it's not as intense, but can still really crisp the plants up. But I did just repot this monster and it needs some time to get its roots sent out into the planter and everything. So I will have to keep an eye on that. Worst case scenario, I just have to pop the poles out. So there's a pole right there. Just have to pop them down, climb up and take them down and switch them out. That's not really that big of a deal. <laughs> I say that now. Sure, I'll be saying something totally different if I actually have to do it. So much brighter, you just, you just have to take my word for it. There was no before and after there, but it is, this is nice. So much light, so much brightness. Okay, back to the plastic. I do have one critique and it's that these plates that go on here that clamp on to hold everything together, they fall apart very easily. Here's the other piece that goes on there and you slide it like that to lock it on, but look at how loose that is. And there's no mechanism on here to really make sure that that clamps on and holds tight. That is kind of annoying and problematic. Like it wouldn't have been that hard to put something up here that can be twisted to lock that in place. And I got it, the dog's outside, got it, I need to let him in. Now he can wait a minute. Here's the pole and here's like a little ball head locks into place, it snaps right on there. Really, really easy to get that on there. And then I was about to show how simple it was and look at what just happened. This is what I'm talking about. Like that shouldn't snap off that easily. It seems like an easy thing to have designed around and come up with a solution for. Oh, look at that. So white and so crisp, looking good. Definitely not perfect, still needs some work. There are some areas where there had to be some overlap. This plastic only went to right around here. So I had to just kind of improvise and come up with a different solution. And I'm tripping over plants right now. I had to rearrange to get the ladder in here and it just knocked something over. So I ended up cutting a separate piece to go from this wall to right here. So there's a seam right here for right now that I can walk through, which is great. Otherwise there'd be a zipper door here. There was one like significant issue, an issue that I had last year with all of these things too, and it's that this Gorilla Tape, I think I got a bad batch. It just, it doesn't want to stay. It doesn't want to stick. Last year had the same problem. The tape just kept falling down. I'll order some more tape just so I can avoid having to go back to the store. I was just there trying to not leave the house very often, you know, with all the COVID stuff going on. And I will also be getting some seaming tape to attach these pieces because there's the two separate pieces here and I want to be able next year to put all of this up in one solid piece. So it'd be a lot easier. So now all that's left to do is I need to stabilize the legs and try and get this closed off here. It's gonna be a little bit drafty until I get that seam tape and get these pieces attached and then get the zipper. You get it. Supposed to be doing something else right now and I've already started talking about other things. I do have some leftover plastic. It wasn't enough to double up and I don't think I want to double up with this plastic. I'm not really all that into it. I, I noticed that it tears very easily like the tiniest little hole and it just runs all the way through. So you know, I usually like to double up, have 
two layers so that it provides extra insulation. I'm not going to do it with this plastic. I'll put up another layer of just really cheap drop, drop cloth, like four milliliter, milliliter, four millimeter. I'm, uh, my brain's moving faster than my mouth. My apologies. It'll be a lightweight plastic that'll be on this outside and that's something I can just tack on up there. And I'm gonna have to get up there again anyways because the tape just keeps falling down. So I don't wanna to spend too much time on this right now anyways, since it's just falling apart. But there are these little stabilizers, these like little pucks that go right underneath the feet of these poles down here. That just kind of helps hold things in place. Can you see that? I hope so. I have my camera like sitting on a teeny tiny little piece of plastic trying to hold it up right now. But the last thing that it says to do before putting on the door is to pull the excess plastic underneath it and then to drop this foot in there. And that is in some way going to help keep it from sliding around. I don't know. I mean, that would make sense if that little rubber puck thing was in contact with the ground, but it's on the slippery plastic. Whatever, I'm just following the instructions. And now for the last part, getting the door installed. The instructions here are how to do it as a flap door. So you can see you have to roll it on up and hook it up. I don't want to do that. That's that's too much work. It requires far too much precision. I'll mess it up. So instead, uh, we just take this piece. There's an adhesive on the back. It gets stuck on there and then you cut it open. It's very simple. So this is what a great video, just looking at a black plastic wall. And now for the fun part. Once that's up, you just unzip it and then take a razor blade. Don't know why I'm doing this as if it's a tutorial because there's so many people out there who are trying to figure out how to put zipper doors in their garage. Oh, finally, this makes things so much easier. I've been having to lift it up and crawl underneath since I started this project. It got very annoying very quickly, still knocking things over, but hey, now I can get in and out without having to get my knees dirty. Oh, and I only had to crawl underneath because I had that unblocked off so I couldn't walk around. This is partially just my fault because I was being messy. Whatever, don't care, it's done, I'm happy. Okay, so here's what happened. The new plant came in the mail. It only sat outside for like maybe two minutes, if even, which is great because it's like 29 degrees outside and icing and snowing. I was going to do the unboxing on camera, but then I decided that it would be more appropriate to call the person who sent it to me, who's an old dear friend of mine, and talk to them on the phone while I open the box because, you know, they're the ones who sent it to me. But I did still film with my other camera. I just didn't talk during it. So it's a little bit of footage here of me opening up the plant. As soon as I pulled back the little piece of paper and could see that little sliver of foliage, I knew exactly what this was. Kind of a story behind this plant. We'll talk about that in just a minute here, but everything looks great. The plant seems totally happy, healthy, very well established. There's roots coming out the bottom of the pot even. I'm thrilled with the quality. The leaves are like a little bit banged up, but that's just kind of the name of the game when shipping a big plant like this. Anything with big leaves, that's just sort of what happens, right? And I am so happy to finally have this beautiful plant out here. To have it back in my life. Oh, it's been such a long time. This was an extra special gift to be getting because the person who sent this to me knew the backstory behind me and my old Gloriosum. I had one from almost like 2004, maybe 2005, that doesn't matter, till 2008. So I don't know, roughly four years, something like that, that I had one. And uh, back in the day, you could get these for fairly cheap. The one I had, I think I got from Stokes Tropicals and it was $40, maybe 50 at the most. When I got it, it was in a gigantic pot. It, well, not gigantic, but compared to what you get them in now, it was in a 10 inch pot. And the plant was probably about double the size of this. Maybe not quite double, but it was, you know, significantly taller. It was a nice, big, mature Gloriosum. It was one of those plants that I had uh, and I really liked it and uh, thought it was just super pretty. But when it died, I just never bothered to replace it. When I say died, what I really mean is that it was it was murdered. So my dog Tucker, who just passed not long ago, 
he was a puppy 2008 and uh, I had set up like a little display area in my garden so I was about to have a pretty decent sized party with a whole bunch of family and relatives, neighbors, people coming over. So I had taken just tons and tons of tropical plants that I'd gotten on clearance and set up this very elaborate spot in the gardens. It just, it looked so pretty. It was gorgeous. I incorporated the, the Gloriosum that I had and there was like all kinds of bromeliads and dracaenias and those sorts of things. It looked stunning. I did that early morning before the party and then I came inside, washed my hands and went back outside and all of the plants were shredded, shredded to pieces, spread all over the patio. And there was dirt everywhere. That was Tucker's first time eating and destroying my plants. That was the first time he dog NATO'd on my plants. And I really, I wasn't that upset about it because he's a puppy and sometimes those things happen with puppies and you train him to not do those things. He never did anything like that again. I mean, his tail destroyed plenty of plants, but he never dug anything up and ate it. At least not that I can recall. So anyways, that's the story behind my old Gloriosum and uh, I never got a new one. It's because the price had started to go up on them. Like even several years ago, the price had moved up to like being 70 or $80. And I was like, oh, no way. And now, I mean, you know, you, these are pretty expensive plants. So it's not something that I was going to go out and get a new one of, at least not until the price came back down on them. And these are, as far as the rare, this is not a rare plant at all, just putting that out there. We'll call them designer plants. Anyways, I had mentioned to this very good old friend of mine uh, that whenever I see those Gloriosums, it reminds me of Tucker, now that he's passed, and then they sent me this. It's very sweet. Very, very, very sweet. Sorry, got a little choked up there. Always nice when there is a story and some sentiment to go behind the plants is this was one of the few plants out of the ones that we're all calling rare now that i had thought about getting another one of because I, it's one i've missed having in my collection and i prefer to not spend a ton of money on plants just because i don't want to feed that beast the prices on these they're kind of like with the melanochrysums where they're expensive but you can usually get little divisions and cuttings for low three digit, digit little, <laughs> low three digits uh even down to like on rare occasions tiny little ones for around 70 to 100 dollars which is nuts because like i said not that long ago we're talking about 10 years ago could get a plant this size if not bigger for between usually 45 to 70 dollars somewhere in there but you yeah, know not as many people were scooping up and trying to get them back then either and what a great looking plant too it has what three decent sized leaves on it not huge but a good size compared to i mean it's pretty hard to get them at a decent size these days its oldest growth is somewhat tattered and torn I don't know. I'm not bothered by that, though. Here the stems are all looking good, but don't want to focus. Don't know why my camera's been doing that. And then from all the way down in here, there is a nice new growth that's coming up. Look at this. That's going to be a pretty good-sized leaf that's coming all the way up in here and curling through. So from here all the way up to right there, and that's going to keep unfurling. I'm kind of wondering if I should save that from this plastic loop in here. Should I pull that out? Should I very delicately loosen that up so that it has some freedom and some give? I don't want it to get pinched or bruised or anything like that. I mean, it's already, you can see there's some blemishes in here. That's totally normal. It's just been shipped and the weather's been kind of cool. There was a heat pack in the box with us. I doubt there's going to be any type of cold damage with it. The soil feels just a smidge moist, which is really all it needs to be. So the plant itself should be fine. Looks healthy enough. Not just healthy enough. It looks like a nice healthy plant. Such lovely, beautiful plants. The thing with the Gloriosum is that the foliage on these, it just, it looks like a painting. The different angles that you view it from, you see different hints of green, different stripes, the veining. When you get up close, I don't know how well it's going to show in camera. It almost looks like it's been sketched onto the plant and everything's been watercolored in. So it's one of the reasons that this is one of my favorites of the philodendrons. I really, really like the, um, what is it? The McDowell great philodendron I, because they're sturdy, more sturdy, I think, than the Gloriosums personally. One of the reasons I don't have a ton of, uh, like the hyped up plants like 
crystallinums and those sorts of things is because I move my plants in and out. I can't really have plants that are going to be really particular or plants that are going to stress when there's changes. One of my dream plants for a long time has been a Warquium, you know, the queen in Thyrum, but they just, that's a plant that is not going to be happy with being moved in and out from going inside to out and then out to back in they take such a long time to adjust to their new environment that I feel like it would be such a huge pain to keep a plant like that. It's certainly doable, it's just why mess with it? With a plant that's going to have to have a several week transition, I mean, they all kind of do, but that's a plant where its transition may involve it dropping leaves, leaves that they take a long time to grow. Eh, I just don't want to mess with it. I have the Melanochrysum, that's always been a great plant, a very easy one. Easier than the Gloriosum, I will say that. I love the Gloriosum, and it has, I mean, it's been, what, 12 years since I've grown one, so I'm probably going to be a little bit rusty with remembering the different things I did to care for them. But the main thing I remember was that it was a plant that did better when I didn't smother it. When I didn't over-mother the plant, it did better for me, so... Which is great. So I just have to remember to not be overbearing with the plant. That makes a big difference. And so does the potting media. Now, I'm not going to do any type of repot with this for a while. It's a new plant, so it needs a few weeks to adjust. I don't have high hopes for that new growth just because it's already progressed so far. If it were smaller, then I think that it would actually be better because it'd be a little bit more protected. Sometimes when they're this far along during shipping, they come out kind of like the first pancake. Do you know what I mean? Where it's the, maybe not going to be the most attractive leaf. And that's okay. I'm not concerned about that. The main thing is getting it acclimated and reestablished and making sure it's nice and happy again. So that's why I'm not interested in repotting it yet, at least not for a few weeks. Though it does seem to have a fair amount of sphagrum in here, which I'm not a fan of. Just holds on to too much moisture. I prefer for that not to be in the pots. It can sit around and cause issues with rot. And to each their own, that really just has to go with your growing styles and everything. It is very, very humid out here. So I don't need much around the base of the plant to help hold moisture. Like right now the humidity is hovering around I think 90%. Actually I need to turn the humidifier off. You can see it like there's basically it's like I'm sitting inside of a cloud right now. Can you see it? I'm not really sure if you can but it really it feels like I'm in a cloud. There's a, a haze throughout this entire place and I don't want to pull a Kaylee here. I don't want the fire department getting called on me because of the humidifiers. Just turn the fan on. That'll make a difference. The only reason that I even brought any of that up was because I have to decide, well, do I want to keep this out here or in the house? Now, I think it would be better for right now to keep it in the house because the Gloriosum, it's not going to be super sensitive to humidity, at least not in my house. The humidity is right around 45 to 50% which is the low end, I think, for one of these philodendrons. But the temperature out here is still pretty low. It's up to 62 from 55, so it's up 7 degrees in about, I don't know, 40 minutes. That's pretty good, but I don't expect it to keep climbing like that overnight. That's probably not what's going to happen. Usually when it's been below 60 in here, like between 50 and 60 for more than 24 hours, it generally takes a full day to get things warmed back up. I really probably shouldn't even have brought this out here to film it. It's just the acoustics in the house absolutely suck. So I thought it would be better to come out here to the grow space. And it is nice and moist. It, like I said, it's, you notice, extremely humid. Like there's just clouds and fog flowing around everywhere in here. If I had to choose between the moisture and the warmth, I'm gonna go with the warmth for right now because of the risk of rot. That's something that could be exacerbated because it's just been shipped and it was cold outside, even though there was a heat pack. That's something to still be very aware of, right? Because the heat pack is great and everything, but it was 29 degrees outside. It was in a truck, but I don't know what it's been through in the last few days. That's a big thing with any house plant, especially a philodendron, is to try and avoid rot. And that's why I'm thinking having it in the house just for another day until temperatures get nice and toasty out here. That's probably a better way to go. And I actually, I have an empty fish tank I can set this inside of to help hold the moisture in. I think that's overkill for a Gloriosum. Like I said, the humidity in the house is between 45 and 50, which is the low end for a Gloriosum. But I 
think that it will be fine just for a couple of days. And like I said, I don't have huge hopes for that leaf that's coming up back there, the first pancake. Higher humidity would be better for it, but I think not having the plant rot would be even more better, much better, more important. Okay, my brain has stopped working. I'm so excited and happy about this plant. Talk about a great gift because it came from the heart. It wasn't just like a, hey, here's a rare plant. Like I said, not even a rare plant. Called a designer plant because it's overpriced and pretty. Not that pretty necessarily has anything to do with designer things. Yes, shade intended. It just means that much more that the person who sent this to me remembered. And it was, I mean, we hadn't been that long since we talked about this particular plant. It's actually... Well, it's not that funny. I was going to say I had gotten ready to order one for myself back in November because I was trying to get a lot of houseplant orders done before the temperatures really got too cold. And I don't really like to order too much in January. So there's going to be a lot of stuff coming in the mail in January because of things I ordered in November that for some reason haven't shipped yet. But the intention was to not have them out while it's cold. Anyways, I ended up not placing the order. Instead, I ordered a bunch of orchids. And so I'm even more extra happy that I got to kind of have my cake and eat it too. And you know, I've still been thinking about that philodendron, that Scandens, that was at Lowe's. I don't know why, because that's such a, I don't, don't want to say a basic plant, but it's just, you know, when you've seen them so often, when they're so common, you tend to not notice them. But that, maybe that's kind of like goldfish. They're adorable, even though we see them all over the place. But that particular one was just so pretty that I'm not saying I want it, but it sort of restruck my uh, plant love for just some simple leaves. Not, this isn't really a simple leaf. This is a very pretty, very fancy kind of somewhat diva-ish leaf. Not really though. I wouldn't consider the Gloriosums to be super diva plants. Sometimes they might throw a bit of a fit when their needs aren't met, but you can say that about most plants. And as long as whatever they're potted in, isn't too moisture retentive, they tend to be fairly forgiving, at least as far as the fancier philodendrons are concerned. Holy frickin' fog, look at how steamy it's getting in here. I told you, I feel like I'm sitting in a cloud right now. I will talk more about the new humidifier next week. That's something that I don't really wanna have mixed in to the end of a video because it's something I think I'll end up having a bunch of questions on in the future. It is fairly self-explanatory, but there is a lot to talk about with it. That is so beautiful with the mist floating around in front of it. Ooh, I should get my lasers out. <sighs> it's too late to go dig around for the lasers. I'm not going to do that, but I do plan on getting them out at some point because with all of this misty fog in here, I mean, how much fun we need to have an actual plant party it's been a very long time. It's a pandemic, so what, what better thing to do than to hang out and have a party all by yourself with your plants? There's nothing sad about that at all. It's totally normal. It's something everybody does, right? Yeah, whatever floats your boat. Okay, so to finish my thought that I started and went off into a different direction with, I won't be repotting this for a few weeks. It needs to acclimate and adjust. I just want to keep it watered and leave it alone. It does look like there's a significant amount of sphagnum down in here, at least more than I would prefer to be in here, which is any, I don't really like sphagnum moss in my aeroid mixes specifically, at least with philodendrons. I have just found that sometimes it'll hold on to way too much moisture, especially once I have the plants outdoors. If we're going to have a, like maybe a week or so where it's really, really rainy, then just having that moss in there just leads to problems. It's not a huge deal if like you have really stable conditions and you've mastered your plant watering. But since things change so much throughout the year, I live someplace where each season the climate is significantly different from the one prior. Because of that, watering has to be changed every few months. The watering habits have to be just tweaked just a little bit. And uh, having that moisture retent of moss in there ugh, just causes problems. Not my favorite. But I also will not be repotting this until temperatures in here are in the mid 70s to lower 80s. That would be my preference. Which, I mean, that should, like, within a few days, that should be the case. But either way, it's just been shipped. It's a new plant. It needs some time to adjust. And probably wasn't the best idea to bring it out here to film it because it went from inside where it's like 72, 50-ish percent humidity to out here where I think it was 58 or 60 when I brought it out. It's up to, I think, 62 or 64 now and, uh, like, 90 percent humidity. It's a lot of change and a lot of shock. And then a few hours ago, it was in a box. So... That I'm putting this poor thing through a lot, and I probably shouldn't have done that. Oops. Luckily, it's a Gloriosum, so it should be totally fine. Not really that concerned. Gonna make sure to give it plenty of light. 
decent temperatures, decent humidity, and really just going to leave it alone for a few weeks. This poor thing needs to recover. Oh, and water. I did, did I mention that I made sure to water it? I actually, I ran water through it. Then I let it sit in water for only about five or 10 minutes that I didn't want to do it for too long when I saw the moss that was in there. I thought it was like, you know what? Light drinks. That's the way I generally prefer to do things with plants that do have a tendency to rot out fairly easily. This one, not as easily as some of the others, but still, it's not like I can just order a new one for $45 like I could back in the day, right? So you have to be a little bit more careful, a little bit more on eggshells, which is, I mean, really how we should be with all of our plants, right? It's just sometimes, I don't want to call common house plants throwaway plants, but they're easily replaceable, so sometimes get a little bit more lax and relax with them. Yes, it's wasteful, not necessarily the best habit to be in, but I think y'all know what I mean, right? Don't, don't judge me. I'm sure y'all do the same thing, don't you? <laughs> Maybe not. I don't know. I try to not treat common, more affordable plants as things that can be tossed or thrown away, but I don't stress out about them as much. There we go. That made more sense. Okay, well, that was fun. Lots of fun, rambly chat time, looking at a plant. It's been a long time since I sat here at the desk and had the lights all set up on a plant and just got to talk about it. That's kind of fun. I haven't done that since, like, I don't even know, March, February of 2020, something like that. Speaking of 2020, Happy New Year. It's 2021, officially, finally. It's not like the magic switch has been flipped and things will necessarily be better, but it's just good to have that year behind us. I'm still grateful for how things went for me personally in 2020. Yeah, it was a rough year, but it was a rough year for everybody. I feel fortunate and I'm very happy. Things could have been a lot worse. Much, 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 much worse. Did y'all have a good new year? I hope so. I didn't really do anything special. I worked on the plastic out here for a little while and then I played some video games, which I haven't done in a long, long, long time. I didn't play anything super exciting. I was playing Pikmin on the Nintendo Switch. It's just kind of a mindless, cute game. I'd like to get back into more intense games. I usually use on my PlayStation 4. It's just, I haven't had time in like the last year. Really just haven't been playing many games. And I haven't really been finding any good games. At least not to my preference. Like there are games from back in the day that I absolutely loved, like Portal, one of my favorite games ever, and the Uncharted games. Those are a lot of fun. Call of Duty, eh. I mean, it's fun when you're playing with other people. I would go up and down with that one. Whole bunch of them, but I don't know what's good anymore because I haven't been playing them or keeping up with them. And, and I probably won't now either. I'll keep playing Pikmin just because it's mindless and dumb. But now that I have the plastic up out here, it's time to get back to doing the plant things, which I'm so happy about. Amazing how much better moisture gets held in when you're not using as anywhere near as big of a space. Wait, over here, almost can't see through this. I know I said I was going to turn the humidifier off, but I got, I'm kind of curious to see how foggy it can get in here. I probably, it's probably not good to be in here. We'll talk about the humidifier situation next week. On that note, I'll wrap it up because I could ramble about the plants all day long. Hope everybody's doing well. Comment down below. Say hi. I love talking to everybody. What are some fun things that are going on with your plants? Did you have a good new year? Resolutions? I don't tend to make resolutions. I try to think more along the lines of if I want to change something, I need to just go ahead and do it. But it can be fun to have those traditions. Gloriosum experiences. What are some of yours? Like I said, it's been like 12 years since I had mine. I remember a fair amount of what I did to keep it, especially with fertilizing. I had a fertilizer that I used for these that seemed to work pretty well. It was just simple seaweed stuff. Really seemed to enjoy it. Okay, a <laughs> little bit too much fog, getting hard to breathe. I don't want to get a UTI. Did I say UTI? I meant upper, you are the upper respiratory. I didn't mean UTI. I, mean, I don't want to get one of those either. Lots of fun plant things to do this week, as always. And most importantly, everybody, keep on growing. Bye. Bye.